Welcome to BTC Online Fan. Thank you for joining us. We are excited for today's message. Surely, this will leave an impact and make us love God more. Sabi sa Joshua chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 and then I will jump to verse 9. This is one of the verses that um, I've been sharing to the leaders lately, to the people lately. And I believe this is uh, the verse that we always come back to kapag ikaw nahihirapan or you feel that you are weak. Sabi ron, let me just read it. Sabi ron, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous for you shall cause these people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and be and be and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may be or you may have good success wherever you go. The verse nine: Have I not commanded you? Inulit ulinya. What? Be strong and be courageous. Inulit ulit po sinabi dito ni ni Lord kay Joshua because uh, Joshua is scared. You know, ito po yung bagay na, kumbaga, pupunta siya sa isang lugar na hindi pa niya na pupuntahan. Or maybe, he will become the person na hindi pa siya nagiging. No? Sabi ron that, uh, um, the story was that Moses died and siya po yung kanang kamay and, and siya po yung magta-take over doon sa bansang Israel, doon sa nation of Israel in the wilderness coming into the promised land. And God was comforting him. Sabi niya, be strong and be courageous. A lot of times you keep on coming back to this verse to give us courage, to give us strength. You know, kapag binabasa natin to, uh, gusto natin ma, ma kumbaga para tayong nakatira ng shabu. Alam mo yun, hindi ka, hindi ka nangihina niya, parang punong-puno ka ng energy. I, I believe this is what we need to hear at this time. Some of us here, akala natin, you know, I just want to hear this. Saying that, look, that, uh, son, be strong. Or daughter, just be strong. Ikaw naman, pag nainig mo to, no? I'm strong, I'm strong. You know, motivate mo yung sarili mo. Because we need to hear this right now. Be strong. Sino nakarinig mo to before? Or maybe narinig mo ngayon. No, tibayan mo lang. Lilipas din yan. Maging, maging malakas ka lang. You know, in times like this, you know, they say that these times, it's a survival of the fittest. Honestly, that's what's happening right now. Okay? Na kailangan, matibay ka, kailangan strong ka. If not, papusokin ka ng virus. If not, you know, anong isa ka pupulute yung pagkatapos nito? It's survival of the fittest. And they say that's the only the strong that will survive. You know, kung gaya mo maging extinct, kailangan maging strong ka. Sabi ron. And there are a few, a few more quotes na sometimes would like like uh, for us to hear para lang ma-encourage tayo. Let me just give you a few. Sabi ron, these times are hard, but they will pass. Stay strong. You know, pag narinig mo yun, na parang, yeah! Amen? Sino, na, sino nakarinig ka na noon? And yung parang na-pump up ka, na yeah, I will be strong. Yes, Pastor, whatever I'm going through right now, kailangan maging strong ako, then you will become strong. In your mind, kailangan maging strong ako. Another thing, another verse, or another quote, sabi ron, you have to be at your strongest when you're feeling at your weakest. Some of us here, we are weak right now. And sabi ron, you have to be your strongest. So ikaw, pinapump up mo yung sarili mo. Yeah, I'll be strong, I'll be strong. Push up ka, nag-exercise ka, para kasi kailangan mo maging physically strong eh. And another thing, sabi, stay strong. These things will get better. It may be stormy right now, but it can't rain forever. Sa bagay, di naman habang buhay guulan, so dapat habang humuulan, strong ako. Kailangan maging strong ako. You know, sometimes we try to motivate ourselves with quotes like this. Thinking na, this will get me by. If marinig ko to, I will post it sa aking, sa aking wall, ilalagay ko sa, sa, sa cellphone ko. I will always recite it to myself para maging strong ako. You know, you're telling yourself to be strong. And oftentimes, we look to our favorite uh, motivational movies. I don't know about you. Ako, marami po akong mga motivational movies in my, in my library. Sometimes, pinapunod ko ito. One of my favorite motivational movie is yung movie na uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Will Smith, one of my favorite actor. Si Will Smith. Ang story nito is that itong, itong character niya, si, si Chris Gardner, by the way, this is a true-to-life story. This is yung, yung family o yung magtatay na sobrang they're broke already and they're sleeping doon sa banyo ng subway. 
And they're trying to motivate themselves. He's trying to motivate himself to be the better person, to be strong, to be perfect for his kid. And there is this clip that I want to show you. You know, minsan parang ganyan tayo eh. Right? Can, can, you, can we show this video clip right now? I'm going, bro! Oh! Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average. You know, so, whoa. So you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know, so I really, uh, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? All right. Okay? All right, go ahead. somebody tell you you can't do something not even me all right all right you got a dream you got to protect it people can't do something themselves they want to tell you you can't do it you want something go get it Period. Sometimes we feel like, you know, we want to be, or we, we're in that situation right now. When everybody is, or our situation is telling us to quit, our situation is telling us to stop. And sometimes we, we are looking for places or maybe you know, messages like this to motivate us, to tell us, you know, don't, don't, don't quit, don't stop. Na parang naghihintay ka lang. You know, na parang naupo ka lang sa isang tabi. Then you're hearing yung, yung motivational sound na parang may, may sound effects pa and then bilang may lalapit sa'yo. Maybe uh, sa leader mo, maybe pastor mo, maybe yung kapatid mo, maybe tatay mo. Palpitang ka bilang sasabihin sa'yo na, you know, Kahit na anong nangyayari, alam ko mahirap ang mga ating pangyayari. Alam ko nagugutom ka. But you need to keep it together. You need to stay strong. You know, the rain will keep on going, but it's not going to go forever. Stay strong. Alam mo minsan kailangan mo lang marinig yun. And, and in your mind, you're playing it right now. Maybe it was mo, yes. Opo, pastor, opo, opo, kuya, opo, ate. I'll be strong. I'll be strong. You know, sometimes that, that plays in our minds, that plays in our lives and thinking natin that that will keep us strong. You know, maybe that's what you need to hear right now. That maybe that's why you're tuned in right now and listening, waiting for, for something that will motivate you coming out from this message. You know, in times like this, we need to stay strong. We need to, uh, to hear words na nagsasabi, you can do it. Don't stop, don't quit. You know, last week, sinasabi natin yun, we need to be a church that is fighting. Sabihin natin, dapat tayo susuko, dapat lalaban tayo. You know, you're pumped up, you're pumped up. You need to be strong. Why? Because in this situation, we need to be strong, not just for ourselves, but we need to be strong for our family. We need to be strong for our marriage. We need to be strong for our children, maybe for our kuya, ate, mga kapatid natin, mga bunso natin. We need to, we need to be strong for those people who are relying on us. Marami yung mga taong naghihintay sa atin, umaasa sa atin. Kailangan maging strong ako. That's why I'm here, Pastor. I want to hear a motivation. I want, you to, I want you to tell me, be strong, don't quit, don't stop, keep on fighting. You know, in crisis like this, that's what we need to hear. Be strong. And sometimes we associate itong words ito in being strong, in being relaxed, being calm. Uh, you know, yung hindi ka nagpapanik, everybody else is panicking, but not me, not you, because I'm strong. No, not showing weakness. Not emotional. Kaya ikaw kailangan compose ka lagi. 
right? You try to be strong because you need to be strong. But oftentimes, I don't know about you, if you can relate to this, na kahit na in your mind, you're thinking, I need to be strong, pero in reality mo, pagod na pagod ka na, hirap na hirap ka na. You know, for those who's trying to be strong, who's trying to stay strong, who's trying to emo- be emotionally stable, pero somehow you find yourself the last few days na parang, ang hirap, hindi ko kayang gawin. You know, we end up nothing like what we are thinking. Nothing like what we are saying that I need to be strong. You find yourself being weak. You know, no matter how strong we try to show ourselves and to show others that we are strong, we end up breaking down. We end up being emotional. We end up panicking and showing our weakness for the whole Facebook, our whole families to see. Tama ba? Now you try to be strong. You try to be composed. You try to be relaxed. Pero there are just some things that is breaking you down. No? Makita mo lang yung mga nangyayari ngayon sa bansa natin. You were, you were full of hope. You were strong. And then no nakita mo yon that everybody's fighting. Ano nangyari? You start becoming weak. You start to weep. What's happening? Ito bang mangyayari? Ito ba ang katapusan namin? Na eventually, we will all be fighting. You know, this, this morning, this is what I want to share to you briefly. About staying strong. About staying strong, but somehow you find yourself being weak. But there's a good news today. Jesus is showing us something different. You know, something different in a way to be strong. Let me, let me show, the, show to you this verse. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 20. Sabi ron, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 20. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, I did not come to abolish the law of the prophets or the prophets, that means the, the Old Testament. Next verse. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Verse 19. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever... But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. What is Jesus saying here? He is saying, dun pala sa may verse 17, let's go back to sa may verse 17, pag himay himay natin. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. Jesus came not to ah uh, 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 ba to? Hindi para i negate yung Old Testament. Hindi ibig sabihin that we are now in the New Testament na hindi natin babasahin yung Old Testament. Because the Bible is a whole book in itself. Hindi ibig sabihin that Jesus came bali wala natin yung Old Testament. That's what Jesus is saying, no? But Jesus came to fulfill it. To fulfill them on verse 18. Sabi ron, that He came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill them. Kaya nga nagkaroon ng New Testament because of Jesus Christ. Now He is the game changer. Jesus is the game changer. Dati kasi ang Old Testament, gito po yun, no? let me explain to you. The Old Testament way, that, that is the part of the Bible that describes having a relationship by what we do. Our own efforts. Na kailangan, you do this, you do that, you do that. Kaya nga po meron 10 commandments at hindi lang po natatapos yung commandments doon. Meron pang 600 more commandments. No, bukod doon sa 10. Thou shall not do this, do that, do that, do not, do not, do not, puro do not. Ang dami po doon. 
And that's the only way that you can have a relationship with God. That's the only way that you can enter into His presence. Kaya nga bago ka pumunta sa may temple back in the day, ang kailangan mong gawin is mag-aalay ka muna. Why? Because you keep on missing the mark. And the only way para i-bridge yung gap na yon is through, uh, is through a offering. You have to offer something. You know, like a lamb, a sheep, a cow, goat, uh, uh, birds. Bago sila lumabit, bago sila mag-church. Thank God. Thank, thank you, Lord, na dumating ka na hindi na lang natin gawin yun. Can you imagine a church na kailangan lahat magdala ng kambing, ng baka, at ng mga kalapate? Can you imagine kung gaano kadami yung stage natin dito nun? Right? In, in the Old Testament, that's what you need to do. Why? Because they are living under the law. Do we get that? And then here comes Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, I did not came here to abolish it, but to fulfill it. Ano sabihin ng fulfill? That Jesus is the only one who fulfilled all 600 commands. Yung po yung nangyari doon, you know, when He was hanging on the cross, He fulfilled 600 uh, prophecies as well. Lahat ng prophecies in the Bible about, about uh, a Savior, It happened to him. So he did not just fulfill yung law, but he also fulfilled all the prophecies. That's what he was talking about. You know, when something is fulfilled and finished, it means we move on. Kaya nagkaroon ng Old Testament, and then here comes Jesus, and then merong New Testament. Let me just make that clear. The whole Old Testament, the whole Old Testament is all about uh, basically base, uh, performance base. You po ibig sabihin that you need to do this, you need to do that. Performance, according to your performance, yung faith mo, nasusukat sa performance mo. That's what it means, okay? And the Old Testament as well, it points to Jesus Christ. Lahat po nang nakasulat doon. Simula pa nung, nung ginawa ni Lord si Eba si Adan, it's all about Jesus Christ. Amen? The Old Testament points to Jesus Christ. The story of David and Goliath, it's not just about David and Goliath. It's about David like si Jesus. That means he, is, he will be slaying giants. Amen? That he will become our shepherd. Yung story ni, ni Noah. It's all about Jesus as well. It points back to Jesus. Performance-based. Ngayon, here comes the New Testament. Ganito po nangyari sa New Testament. Ang Old Testament is all about performance-based. Now, ang New Testament is about His performance. Do we get that? Old Testament, kailangan mag-perform ka. Ang New Testament, manonood ka na lang because si Jesus ang mag-perform. Amen? Yung Old Testament, kailangan performance level ka. Kailangan, ano, perfect ka. And if not, patay ka. Ang New Testament, si Jesus lang panonoodin mo. That's it. Do we get that? That's what it said in verse 17, that he did, not, he did not came to abolish it, but to fulfill it, but to accomplish it. And He accomplished and fulfilled uh, all the prophecies, all the laws doon sa Old Testament. And in verse 18, For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And just like the Old Testament, ito pong verse sinasabi ni Jesus dito, it points back to Him. Jesus will accomplish the 600 laws while the teachers of the law are trying to manipulate it. Yung mga nagmutugis sa niya, yung mga Pharisees, yung mga religious people doon, nagalit nagalit kay Jesus Christ. Si Jesus, He is fulfilling it. Samantalang itong mga lawyers na to, itong mga polit, itong mga prophets or feeling prophets na to, they're trying to manipulate. Pinapaikot niya yung mga tao just to make them see and think that they are perfect. That they're not uh, uh, breaking any laws. Na sila ay banal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what, that's what the, uh, this verse 18 is trying to say or Jesus is trying to tell us. That He alone is perfect. That He alone did not break any laws. Amen. And then verse 19, it goes on. Sabi ron, um, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teach others to do the same will be, le- will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Sino po, sino po ang, ang, ang tinutukay ni Jesus dito? Sabi niyo, this is my first part, whoever relaxes. Sabihin, whoever does not obey, kahit isa man lang doon sa kumad na yon, o kahit isa lang na break niya, will be called the least, pinakaawawa, pinakakonti. While the person, the people who does the will or does the law and also teaches the law will become the greatest. An- anong sinasabi ni Jesus dito? He is comparing. He is comparing himself to who? The Pharisees, the scribes, the religious people back in the day. Na sinasabi niya itong mga taong ito, they're, they're trying to, kunwari, to convince people na sila yung banal, sila dapat yung sinungsundan. While habang, uh, habang yung ibang mga commandments binibreak nila, they're trying to manipulate. But then the greatest is yung taong susunod, gagawin, at hindi lang gagawin, kundi ituturo pa. Jesus is pointing people to Himself. Sinasabi niya, that's me. That's Jesus. Alam pong ginawa niya, hindi lang po basta siya nagturo, bago siya nagturo, ginawa muna niya sa buhay niya. And He makes sure, no ka na tuturo niya, nakikita sa buhay niya. He does it and He teaches them. He was the only one, wala na pong iba. And then Jesus made another example. Maybe sinasabi niya, maybe hindi yung nagigets. Let me take it a little more deeper and closer to home para maintindihan mo. On verse 20, ito po yung sinabi ni Jesus Christ. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Unless... Hindi mo malagpasaan yung mga Pharisees, yung mga scribes, yung mga teachers of the law. You know, hindi ka mapupunta sa heaven. Hindi ka mapupunta sa kingdom of God. Hindi ka magkakaroon ng relationship with the Father. That's what Jesus was telling these people. He's saying, unless you become better, unless you become stronger than these religious people, You know, na lagi nagpipray, sabi, Jesus was telling this in the, the, uh, a few verses after, na itong mga Pharisees, itong mga scribes ato, the way they pray, they, they, they pray outside and let people see how they pray. Para sabihin, wow, banal-banal naman nila. Yung damit nila, sobrang puting-puti, ang dami pang mga ornaments para sabihin na, wow, kakaiba siya. Anong ginagawa nila? They're trying to separate themselves. thinking na uh, to, to make people think na sila yung banal samantalang yung, yung, yung mga taong nakikita, hindi. So nagkakaroon, bigila sila ngayon ng comparison. Buti pa sila, they're strong. Buti pa sila, close sila ni Lord. You know? And Jesus is saying, unless you become better, you become stronger like them, then you won't see God's kingdom. You know, maybe the people were, thing, were, were saying, I can't do that. I can't be like that. Yung ang Ten Commandments, hindi ko pa makumpleto. Yung 600 pa. Amen. Y- yung yung mag-pray nga lang, hirap na hirap pa ako. Hindi ko sila, hindi ko sila makukopya kung paano sila manalangin. I can't be like them. You know, sometimes we feel like we want to, we need to be stronger. Just like yung mga, yung mga kasama natin, just like yung mga leaders natin, just like yung mga pastors natin, just like yung mga politicians natin, just like yung mga Keyboard warriors sa Facebook, kailangan maging strong din ako. Just like them. You know, if not, man, anong nangyari sa ibabash ka nila, pagtatawa ng kan, gagawa ka ng meme. And that's why nowadays, kailangan maging strong ka. Amen. Itong, itong mga panahon ni Jesus, maybe when they were hearing the teaching of Jesus, they were thinking, I can't be like that. I can't be strong. And Jesus is saying, you have to try harder. than they do. You need to become stronger than they do. Maybe in Israel, that's impossible. Jesus, parang ang hirap yata nun. I can't be like that. Parang hindi ko kayang gawin yun. Hindi ko kayang, hindi ko kayang maging, maging banal. Hindi ko kayang maging perfect. That's, that's Jesus' point. There are two things. Yung, yung pinupoint out ni Jesus dito eh. Number one is that no matter how hard you try to stay strong, no matter how you try, you will never be enough. 
you will never be enough. Whatever that you do will never be enough to gain favor in relationship with God. You can't be strong. And then number two na pinapoint out na Jesus dito is that yung approach na yon in being strong, that's obsolete. May bago ng way. That's what Jesus is saying. And He goes on doon sa mga verses na yon, thou shall not do this, uh, uh, thou shall not do that. Ang dami pong mga sinermo ni Jesus doon na parang pinahihirapan niyo yung mga tao. And then lastly, this is His punchline. This is His finishing move. Sabi niyo sa may verse 48, you therefore must be perfect. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, perfect. Kailangan daw maging perfect ka as your heavenly Father is Perfect. Wow. You know, I know some of us here, we, we try to be strong. We try, we try to be perfect. Kaya ikaw gulong-gulo ka, hindi mo alam kung sa kalulugar. Right? Bakit? Kasi everywhere you look, everywhere you go, there's always one person, maybe a few person will say, mali ang ginagawa mo. Tama ba? That's what's happening now. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody saying, mali yan, mali yan, mali yan. They're pointing fingers at everybody else bukod sa sarili nila. Right? Maybe they're thinking that if I point their mistakes, their weaknesses, then people will not see my own weakness. I need to be strong. Come on. Tama ba? We think that if we just remain strong, then I will survive. But you know what? What Jesus is saying here when it comes to being perfect, dalawang bagay daw, Uh, Jesus is saying to, the, to us right now, to be perfect, it means, number one, is to be mature. You know, to fully become what you intended to be. The picture story or the word picture here is like a, a, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. That, that, that's what Jesus is saying to us, that we need to be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect because we are made in His image and because of sin, na-taint yung ating character, na-taint yung kusino tayo. Nagkaroon ng bahid ng dumi. Na before we were, made in the, we were made in the image of God, then because of sin, na-dumihan daw tayo. And Jesus is saying that you need to become perfect You need to become who you are called or you who you are intended to be. Yung caterpillar, hindi lang mananatili yung caterpillar. Amen? Because of the process that God gave that ba- caterpillar, naging, naging kukun siya, o naging sabi nga ni Pastor Janelle, naging chrysalis siya, and then eventually, naging beautiful butterfly siya. Amen? I'm not saying naman yung butterflies, they are perfect. No, they're not. They're not. You know, it's not perfect, but fully becoming what was intended for that butterfly to be. That's what Jesus is telling us. That we need to become mature. When we say mature, uh, uh, kung ano yung intention sa'yo, kung paano mo siya ginawa, kung paakit mo siya ginawa, yun magiging ikaw. You know, God wants us to be perfect, meaning God wants us to mature. Amen. Maybe some of us here, we are still undergoing in that process. All of us here, we are still going through that process. Just like what's happening now in our crisis, nobody is perfect. Amen. Everybody is going through the process. So instead of pointing fingers at people, malika, 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 try to look at, try to look at yourself at the mirror. Tignan mo muna yung sarili mo. Am I perfect? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I becoming who I'm supposed to be becoming? Because in this crisis, everybody's going through the same thing. Amen? And let me tell you this, that nobody will get it right. Most likely not in the first time, not in the second time, not in the third time. So give your leader some slack. Relax ka lang. Amen? Ikaw nga, hirap na hirap eh. Lalo na pa yung mga leaders natin because nobody really prepared for this. Amen? But Jesus is saying, let me go back. That He wants us to be perfect, to mature. Pangalawang bagay that He is telling us, He is pointing to us, is that to come to the end of ourselves. In being perfect, sabi nga nila, nobody is perfect. But then, practice. Sabi, practice makes perfect, right? But we need to be perfect, but nobody is perfect. That's exactly the point of Jesus Christ. You know, for the whole chapter, if you would go back and read this chapter, 
I'm sure you will, you can because you have all the time in the world. Go back. Tignan mo yung sarili mo doon. Nakompleto ko ba to? Naperfect ko ba to? And I'm, I'm guessing 100% sure that none of us had this perfectly down. Meron tayong pagkakamali, meron tayong pagkukulang. Amen? And what is Jesus saying? He's trying to push us to the edge. He's trying to push us to the end of ourselves and accept the fact that we will never be perfect. Amen? Maybe yung mga tao habang sinasabi ni Jesus ito, no, Jesus, that's impossible. Parang mahirap yata yung Jesus. I can't do that. I can't be perfect. I'm not a superhero. Maybe kailangan ko ng somebody who will rescue me. Maybe I need somebody who will point at least to that direction. Maybe Jesus is saying, uh-huh, maybe you're getting it. Maybe some of you, you're getting the point right now. Maybe some of you, nalulungkot ka. Kailangan pala maging perfect ako. In order for me to survive this crisis, kailangan maging strong ako. Kailangan maging perfect ako. But I can't. I can't. Anong gagawin ko, Pastor? Exactly the point. Amen? You can't be perfect. But Jesus is calling us to be perfect. That is the standard. You can't be perfect. Jesus is saying this. You can't be perfect by trying harder. You can't be perfect by doing things that are good. By performing. You can't be perfect not by trying to be strong. But you know what Jesus is saying? You can be perfect if you come to the end of yourself. Maybe some of you, you're thinking, nah, I'm just weak right now. I'm just going through a season of weakness. But let me tell you this. There's no such thing as a season of weakness. You know, that, that's just a lie. Wala pong season, wala pong time of weakness. Ano lang meron, pastor? A lifetime of weakness. Wala nung pinanganak ka hanggang mamamatay ka, you're weak. Sabi nga nila, tao lang mahina. That is true. Maybe there are times that it seems like you're strong. But you know, deep down, you're still weak. We're still weak. There's no season of weakness, only a lifetime of weakness. You know, there is this man. His name was Saul. Some of you, you're familiar with him. He was a persecutor of, of Christians, of the follower of Jesus Christ. He was a persecutor of Jesus Christ. This man is a Pharisee. He is a scribe. He is a teacher of the law. He is a student of the law. He was... Uh, namulat po siya, nabuhay po siya, lumaki po siya with the Old Testament mindset, lifestyle in him na kailangan mo mag-stride. Kailangan mo tumakbo. Kailangan mo mag-perform. Kailangan mo maging perfect. Kaya nag-aral siya ng laws. You know, trying to be perfect, trying not to break any law. And then here comes the way the followers of Jesus Christ saying that you don't need to perform, all you need is to believe in Jesus Christ. Nagalit siya. You know? Because maybe all his life he's trying to be so good. And it, it, ito dumating yung isang grupo, mga cheater, gusto tumalon, gusto mag-cut in sa line. No, no, no. That's impossible. Hindi po pwede yan. So anong ginawa niya? He persecuted the Christians. He was killing the Christians to the point, you know, that na he's trying to make it right. He's trying to, to uh, accomplish the law to the point na siya na mismo nagbe-break na na siya ng law. Thou shall not kill. That's what happened to him. And then one day on the road to Damascus, he was riding his horse or maybe his donkey, his animal, and then Jesus showed up like a blinding light. He was blinded. Sabi ni Paul, Sino ka? Who are you, Master? And then sabi ni Jesus with a loud voice that only he can hear. You know, that's how Jesus oh, encounters us. He encounters us uh, personally. He encounters us uh, intimately. Maybe that's why we are all in our homes right now. Nagkukulong tayo sa mga kwarto natin because God wants us alone. God is removing lahat yung kaguluhan sa paligid natin because God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to us. That's what happened with Saul. 
Sabi ni Saul, who are you, master? Sabi ni Jesus, I am who you are persecuting. From now on, you will be playing in my team. Magkakampi na tayo and you will do what I want you to do. And from that day on, He changed because that's what a true encounter with Jesus does to you. It changes you. Not just from the outside, but also from the inside. Actually, it's from the inside out. That's what G- uh, Paul experienced or Saul experienced. And from that day on, his name was changed. His name now is Paul. Do we get that? And now he started to, to raise up, to build up the body of Christ, the church. And that he's been persecuted now, he's built up. Now he's moving around, moving around the Mediterranean area. Putting up churches, helping out churches, writing to the churches. And there is this one letter he wrote to the Corinthians, to the people in Corinth, the, the Christians in Corinth. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. Sabe, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, Jesus said to him, My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect. Sabi mo, perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Next verse. For the sake of Christ, then... I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities, viruses. Nilagay ko lang po yun. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know what Paul is saying here? He is saying that God's power comes to its full maturity. God's power becomes strong. Where? In His weakness. The Bible is saying, oh, Paul is not saying that you need to be strong. You need to show people that you need to be strong. Na kahit na yung nasa prison ka, you need to be strong. No, Paul is not saying that. But what Paul is saying is that in your weakness, that's where the power, the full maturity, the strong, you know, the strength of God appears in your life. Then he, he continues, therefore, I will boast all the more in my weaknesses. It's not just one, it's many weaknesses. You know, if this is what's happening today, kung nandito si Paul, he would be saying this, I will boast the more in my weakness. Ipagyayabang ko that I'm weak. I'm sure 100% binuli na siya sa Facebook. Ang dami nang nag, nag-aakakansyaw sa kanya, ang dami nang nagre-reklamo sa kanya, showing his weakness. But you know what Paul is saying? Na kahit na I'm weak, that's where I'm going to shout that I'm weak. Sabi niyo, my weaknesses, ang dami niyang weaknesses, hindi lang isa. Sabi niyo, so that the power of Jesus may rest upon my life. Not just for a brief moment, hindi lang po panandalian, hindi lang po ngayon na weak lang ako, but sabi niyo, for my life. My whole lifetime. You know, Paul is saying that God has been strong in me all my life. He's been good to me all my life. Not just for a season, not just through a crisis, but God is always strong in His weakness all His life. Then he goes on, sabi niya ron, I am contented. For the sake of Christ then, I am content with my weaknesses. I am contented with the insults. Oh, I am contented through hardships. I am contented with my persecutions. I am contented with the calamities, with the crisis. Ano sinasabi niya ron? I'm not trying to change me. I'm not trying to be strong for myself. I'm not trying to change my weakness. The people who are insulting me, I'm not fighting back. Amen? 
I'm not fighting back with the persecution. I'm not trying to stay strong during these calamities. But ano sinasabi niya? I am boasting in all my weaknesses. I am boasting when people insult me. I am contented when people are persecuting me. When uh, 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 by surrounding you're persecuting me. I am, I am contented with the calamities that is happening in my life. He was put into prison. He was shipwrecked. Kinagat siya ng snake. Binugbog siya. Pinakulong siya. He was tried even if he wasn't, he wasn't guilty. Ano sinasabi niya? Hindi siya nagre-reklamo. Come on. Hindi siya nagagalit. Hindi siya naiinis. He's not ranting. But what is he saying? But I'm boasting. I am contented with my weaknesses. I am contented with the insults. I am contented with the hardships. I am contented sa gutom ko. I am contented sa persecution, sa paligid ko. I am contented in the crisis that I am facing. You know, if this is happening right now, if Paul is saying this right now, I doubt that people will listen to him. Because nowadays, if you show your weakness, then you're dead. If you show your weakness, then people will devour you. Then people will jump on you. Why? Because you're showing your weakness. You know, even even when we were young, tinuro sa atin to, wag kang iiyak. Wag kang iiyak, tumahimik ka. Stop! Stop! Tama ba sa mga anak natin, ginagawa natin to? Be strong! Ano ka ba? Nadapa ka lang, konting gas-gas lang yan, tumigil ka. And maybe that's why we have this mindset that we need to be strong always. Why? Because people around us will keep on saying, Uy, ano ka ba? Be strong! Amen? We are taught to cover up our weaknesses. We are taught to cover up our faults. And we try to hide our weaknesses and pretend that we are strong. But you know, deep down, we need to come out this morning, this afternoon. You need to say to yourself, I can't. I'm weak. Because we are. You know, in this crisis right now, mapapansin natin, there's a lot of realization going on out there. And I hope you have yours right now. That no amount of money will save you. Kahit gaano kalaki ang business mo, kahit gaano ka-stable yung, yung trabaho mo, kahit gaano kaganda yung bahay at kotse mo, you know what? Eventually, this world will overtake all of those things. It's useless. Ano na silbi ngayon ng mga beach club mo, di mo mapuntahan? Ano na silbi ngayon ng motor mo, talaga pinaganda mo pa, hindi mo na masakyan? Amen? Ano na silbi ng mga pagkain mo, nabubulok na, inimbak mo ngayon, gusto mo ang kainin, wala na, dinonate mo na lang. <laughs> Come on. Now we are seeing that all of those things that we put our lives on, that we build our homes, our families from, are now is shaking. Even the greatest, one of the greatest economies in this world, they were being shaken now. Tataranta sila. Even yung, yung pinakamagagandang hospitals, they are unprepared. All of us are unprepared. Because everybody's weak. We need to realize now, stop pretending. Stop pretending. We are not, we're not strong. We can't be strong. Amen. No, nowadays, hindi ka na pwedeng maging weak. Hindi ka na pwedeng mag-make ng mistakes. Kanina, shiner ko, maybe that's why, you know, sometimes we think that we need to be strong. We need to be strong. Because of these verses, nakada natin yun lang yun. We try to nitpick yung mga verses. So Joshua, balik natin yun sa Joshua, chapter 1, uh, verse 6 and 7, sabi rin, di ba? Be strong. Be courageous. Inut ulit ni Lord, be strong. Be courageous. Lord, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to be strong. I'm trying to be courageous. But Jesus is saying, God is saying, anak, 
Pinalimuta kang basahin. There's verse 5. Sabi ni Lord, sa may verse 5, No man shall be able to stand before you. All the days of your life, you will be strong. No one can stand before you. Just as I was with Moses, here is the punchline. How will you be strong? How can I be strong if I'm weak, Lord? Sabi ni, G, sabi ni Lord, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yes, that's why we are strong. That's how we will become strong. You know, Jesus is pointing out to us that we can't be strong on our own kahit anong gawin mo. Even pinaka best, pinaka the best in this world will never amount to God. Sabi sa Bible, for all have fallen short. All have fallen short. Hindi niya sinabing yun lang mga strong, yun lang mga mayayaman, yun lang mayroong mga pagkain. No, sabi niya, all has fallen short. Nowadays, everybody's short. Short of food, short of money, short of breath. Everybody is short, but Jesus, God is pointing us that you are weak, but I am strong. Why? Because I will always be with you. There is this one clip that I want you to watch. Before we watch this, let me just give you a, a preview. Oh, actually, no. Let's just watch it. Wala bang preview ito because ito na yun eh. Right? So as we play this, let's watch it. Listen to my voice. You know, sometimes para tayong yung bear na yan. Ladro lang tayo in our lives. Pegot-ikot, playing in the grass. And here comes crisis. Here comes the problem. Here comes sin. Here comes the enemy. He's just waiting for us. Then we start running. Right? Yan, takbuhan natin yung mga problema natin. Some of you, you sound exactly like that. Busha. Right? But the enemy is always there in the back. Always following us. Just keep on running. Keep on running. And we think that we would just run away yung crisis natin mawawala. Yung mga problems natin mawawala. That we would just go at the end sa pinakadulo. Maybe that will save us. Here comes the enemy. Here comes crisis. Nakaal natin yung bagay na makapag-save sa atin. It's a big trap to life. We're scared. Some of us will fall. But we try to be strong. So nung gagawin natin, we will swim. Si swimming pa rin tayo. And sometimes we think that we're already safe because malayo na yung crisis. Malayo na yung problem. And we are trying to hold on to a peace that we think that will save us. But you know, there's Y- yung crisis, he always finds a way to find us. He always finds a way to scare us. And he's just waiting for us. We're trying to do all our best para makaiwas. We run away. We're stuck. We try to swim. Very young current in life, it keeps us pushing us towards doing the problem. And then here it is, we stop running. It's the time na that I will be strong. I will fight back. doing it. Yes, I'm being strong. Not knowing. Our 
our father is behind us, protecting us. All we need to do is just run, run towards our father. That's where our protection is. That's where we are strong. You know, this is a picture. This is a video of who we are. This is who we are right now. We keep on running. You know, sometimes yung danger, yung, yung crisis, yung mga problema, it's just around us. Just waiting for us. Just like yung bear. You know, when we see the problem, the first thing that we do is we run. But tayo, thinking that we will outrun. And eventually, yung problema mapapagod din. Then eventually, we will soon find out na mas malakas yung problema. Mas fit. Hinahabol pa rin tayo. Then we end up always back doon sa harap ng problema. This is our picture. This is who we look like. Hindi niya napansin, nagtatry niya siyang maging strong, he stood his ground, he started to growl. Yung, 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 yung mountain layo na takot bigla, akala niya because of him. Dahil doon sa loud shout niya, dahil because he is strong, hindi niya alam, nasa likod pala niya yung tatay niya. Nasa likod pala niya yung protector niya. That's what scared the mountain lion. Not us. Not you. Not because you're strong. Not because you're courageous. But because our Father is. When, G when God says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. He meant that. He's always at our back. But the problem is sometimes we keep on running. We keep on running. Maybe this morning, this afternoon, it's time that we stop running. It's time that we stop pretending to be strong. And let God do His work in our lives. Paul says that God's grace is sufficient for Him. And this morning, this afternoon, it's the same with us. God's grace is sufficient for us. It's sufficient for me. I don't need to pretend that I'm strong. Because when I am weak, that's when God is strong in me. Amen. You don't need to pretend anymore. Maybe some of you, you've been trying to be strong for three weeks now. It's time to lay it down. It's time to give up. No, you're not strong. You're weak. Sabi rin, for when I am weak, then I am strong. It's time to acknowledge how you are weak. May nabasa ko kayo ng post. Sabi niya, we will only realize that God is the most important thing in our lives when God is the only thing left in our lives. Maybe that's the reason why we are going through this crisis. Maybe that's the reason why we are going through this virus right now. The world is taking away all that you have uh, paid for. Lahat ng pinagtrabahuhan mo, lahat ng pinag-ipunan mo, lahat ng pinagplanuhan mo. Why? For us to understand that all we need is God. You don't need to, to, to put up this facade, to put up this wealth thinking that we, that that will make you strong. No, you don't need all of that. What you need is God. God's grace is sufficient for you. You know the most funny thing about what happened to Jesus? The prophecy was that He is the King of Kings. He will be the Lord of Lords. He will be the Prince of Peace. That He will lead His people out of slavery into freedom. 
yung Old Testament was picturing a Savior that is strong. That is perfect. You know, actually, yung pong, yung pong pinanganak si Jesus Christ, when people were hearing about Jesus, what they were expecting was a political leader that will save them. That will save them from Roman captivity, from Roman rule, that will give them freedom, that will feed them. Yun akala nila ang makukuha nila when they are receiving the Savior. When, when Jesus came to sa Jerusalem, He was on a donkey and people were worshiping and praising Him. Pumutol sila ng mga palm leaves. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In a few weeks, we will be celebrating our Palm Sunday. I, I think, is that today? I don't know. M- maybe today. I lost track. That that's happened. That's what happened. They were praising this man. He was the king. He is our king. He will save us. And what happened a few days after? He was hanging on the cross, gasping for air, suffocating in his own blood. And people were seeing him in all his weaknesses. He was exposed. But you know, even if he was hanging on that cross, exposed, gasping for air, that's when he was the strongest. That's the most iconic thing, ironic thing about Jesus Christ. The most strongest moment of his ministry, of his life, was when he was weak. That's when He was saving millions and billions of people. That's when He was was being victorious over sin and death. That's His strongest. And that could be our strongest as well when we are weak. He became weak so you won't have to be weak. Amen. That is God's goodness for us all. That is the good news for us. Hindi mo na kailangan pa magput up ng fasad. God is already being strong for you. He's always with you. Yes, even in these times of crisis. Yes, even in these times of weaknesses. Yes, even in this time of starvation. Even in this time of uncertainty. Jesus is always with you. And don't worry about being weak. Because He will be strong for you. Just be you. Just be you. Come on, let's pray. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, for your promises, for what you have done, Lord. Lord, you became weak so that we will become strong. And Lord, we don't have to put up this facade. We don't need to put up this strong image, God. Hindi po kami kailangan pang magpaka-strong pa because you are already strong in us, Lord. And Lord, we pray that as in our weaknesses, Panginoon. Lord, make us strong. Make us strong right now, Lord. In our hunger, Panginoon. Lord, fill us up, Lord. Bless us more and more, Panginoon. And I pray, God, that in this time of crisis, Lord, we will become stronger. We will start to stand up. We will start to fight back, Panginoon. Lord, hindi po kami victim, but we are conquerors because we have you in our lives, Lord. And Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Lord. All throughout our lives, we will sing of your goodness, Lord. We raise you up. You are our King. You are our Lord. This, uh, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God the best clap. And as we clap our hands, let's keep on worshiping God. Let's start declaring that all our lives, Lord, you've been good and we will worship you, Lord. Come on, sing it out. Because all my life, all my life, you have been so good, Lord. Come on, just worship God right now. With every man that I have made, oh, I will sing the goodness of God. Come on, 
can we declare it? Lord, I love you. Come on, just worship God right now, wherever you are. If you can stand up, stand up. If you want to raise up your hands, raise up your hands and declare. So my love. running away from our problems we've been running away from our crisis we've been running away from the dangers in our lives we think then we can run after we can run away from it we don't know that your more problems it keeps on following us because that's what it is it will keep on running after you but what we do not know just like you bear yung cub na yon, he keeps on running he keeps on running and he keeps on and actually kakatakbo niya, lalo pa siya na didisgrasya. Pumunta siya sa may tree trunk na feeling niya that would save him. It ended up in the, in the worst position, in the worst situation. Nalaglag siya, napunta siya sa river na mas malaki pang danger of drowning. Then he, he tried to swim, he tried to get away. But yung enemy, but yung, yung crisis, but yung problem, it keeps on running after him. And he tried to stand and be and be strong 
You know, when he stopped running, that's when yung savior niya, yung tatay niya, came and rescued him. You know, sometimes we keep on running and dito alam, yung bagay na makakapag-rescue sa atin, yung, yung tao na makakaligtas sa atin, tinatakbuhan din natin along with the problems. You know, it's time that we stop. It's time that we stop. Stop being strong. And let God be God in your life right now. Let God be your Savior. Let Jesus be your Savior right now. So wherever you are right now, maybe you're standing, maybe you're sitting down, just be still. Be still and know God is God. Lay down our lives to God's protection. Lay down our lives to God's salvation. You know the best thing about that clip? After sinagawa ng tata yung, yung mountain lion, the bear started running towards the Father, started running towards the Savior. Pagating niya ron, that's when he was strong, he was happy. He was contented. You know, sometimes we just need to run to God. Maybe some of you right now, you're feeling at your weakest. Maybe some of you right now, gusto mo talaga sumuko. Gusto mo naman dumit go. Ayoko na. Nahihirapan na ako dito. Start running to God right now. Start running to God right now. Because He's been running after you. He's been running after you. And you've been running away from Him. Now it's time to run to God. Wherever you are right now, if you're saying that you want to run to God right now, Lord, I can't take it anymore. I'm weak. I can't be strong. I can't. I'm, I'm so tired of pretending, Lord. If that is you right now, just lay down your life to God. Just surrender yourself to God and start running to God. declare this right now over your lives with my life laid down I'm surrendering now Lord I give you everything Lord I give you my fears Lord I give you my worries Lord I give you even the strength that I have right now Lord I'm laying it down to you come on declare it with my life laid down surrender now I give you everything. Come on, say. My life laid down, surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Sing it again. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after. Come on, if you're surrendering your life to God, sing it out again. If my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after. On, if this is your prayer right now, I want you to raise up both your hands and say, With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's run. Come on, sing it out. Come on, sing it out. With my life laid down, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Lay down all your worries right now. Lay down all your fears right now. All your uncertainties right now. With my life lay down. I give you everything. Come on. Your goodness is running after. It's running out. For the last time, shout it out. You surrender with my life lay down. I give you Your goodness is running out. It's running. Come on. 
Now declare His goodness. sing of your goodness Lord because every day you are good to us every day you are our Savior every day you are our Lord Lord we pray that we will never forget what you have done we will never forget what you are doing now and we will never forget what you will be doing in us in the future Lord Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Lord. We lay down all our lives, all our weaknesses. For when we are weak, then we are strong in you, Lord. This is our prayer. Come on, if you believe it, give a loud shout of amen, amen, and amen. Come on, wherever you are all across this station, wherever you are in Facebook or maybe in YouTube, praise God, praise God. Before I end, I want to share this to you. This... May nabasa rin akong isang quote. It says, it's, it's really true. It says, but no matter how strong we think we are, we need to let God take control. As strong as I am, we still need to look to God for strength. You know, right now, that's what we are experiencing. All of the things that we think will keep us strong. All of the things that we think that will make us survive all is it's all failing it's all failing and we need to look to God right now maybe you're watching at your home or maybe sa kapitbahay mo kasi may mahina ang cell mo <laughs> mahina ang internet mo wherever you are right now let me tell you you need God you need Jesus Christ let him be your strength amen no matter how strong we think we are we always have to recognize that we are nothing without Jesus. He is all that we need every day, even more. How long will you keep on pretending? How long will you keep on going, saying that you don't need God? Gano pa kadaming crisis, gano pa kadaming viruses, hanggang ma-realize mo that Jesus is all that you need because He is all that you could ever need. You know, some people, all, all, actually, not just in the Philippines, but everywhere, everybody is looking for a concrete plan, a foolproof plan, a fail-proof plan for this crisis. We are looking to our leaders that Kalalantin will give us, will save us, will give us this plan, this concrete thing that we are looking for. But the problem is that we are looking for it in the, all the wrong places. Why are you looking for a concrete plan for, for uh, something na hanggang 2022 lang ang term niya. Why are you looking for a concrete plan kung saan sandali lang mabubulok din? Some people are looking for the 8,000 for the 5,000 na kailangan nila. Yeah, it will help. But it will help you for how, how long lang? Ang dami nagre-reklamo about doon sa bigas at sa mga dilatang hindi umaabot sa kanila. Mabamuntahin na kami sa gutom. Noong nakuha nila, kinain nila after three days, ubus na. Pengi, uli kami! You think how long hanggang maubos ang bigas, <laughs> ang mga delata sa Pilipinas, ang pagkain sa Pilipinas? I'm guessing in just a few months, ubus na yan. Hanap tayo ng hanap. 
na mga masasandalan, hanap tayo ng hanap ng mga tatayuan. You're looking for something concrete. You're looking for something that will not be moved, that will not fail. Sabi sa Psalms 18 verse 2 and 3, here's the answer for you. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And I am saved from my enemies. And I am saved from the crisis. And I am saved from the viruses. Hindi po bigas ang makakapag-save sa inyo. Hindi po dilata. Hindi po konkretong plano. What we need is Jesus Christ. Yeah, all of those will help. But what we need is a lifetime of saving. And that is Jesus Christ. And that is the rock. He will never change. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And He is the same forever. If you would make Him as your Lord and Savior today, He will become your Lord and Savior tomorrow. He will become your Lord and Savior next week. He will become your Lord and Savior next month. But it starts today. If you're watching at home, wherever you are, you're watching with your family, maybe you came to a realization na yes, maybe alcohol will not save me. Rice, bigas, dilata will not save me. Relief goods will not save me. Maybe Jesus will. That is true. He is our rock and He will save you. He will save you not just now. He will save you tomorrow. He will save you not just now and tomorrow. He will save you for next week and next month after that. He is that faithful all your life if you would just make Him your Lord and Savior now. If you came to that realization wherever you are right now, can I just pray for you with your head closed? <laughs> Eyes closed and head bowed down. Mahirap i-close ang head natin. Let me pray. Lord, marami po salamat, Panginoon, for this realization. We know, Lord, na hindi po to galing sa amin, but galing sa iyo. And we praise you and we worship you, Lord. For you are a God that is alive and that is moving right now. Wherever we are, Lord, you have touched our hearts. You have touched our spirits. And Lord, right now, I pray, God, that we will have this boldness, Lord, to give our lives to you. And Lord, we are sorry for making this crisis all about us, Lord. And Lord, we, we are sorry that for so long you've been trying to call us, pero ngayon lang. But here we are right now, Lord. We are laying down our lives to you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. We want to see you in person next week. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to get the latest updates. God bless!